We are back once again. I'm Joshua Fisher, along with Nicholas Snacks, Crider, and Quan Cosby. This is the Horns Up Talking Texas podcast. So get your horns up because here we go. Horns Up Talking Texas podcast. We're back once again. It's the off season for us, but there really is no off season. We have a great guest, one of the busiest men in the media today. He's all over the place. Just retired after an awesome eight year career in the NFL. Former All American first round pick out of University of Texas, safety Kenny Vaccaro launching gamers first or joining gamers first initiative. And then he's got the Clark field collective donating 10 mil with TJ Ford to NIL this week. And apparently are you starring in a Marvel movie? Like what else is going on, bro? <laughs> might, <laughs> be <my future. laughs> might, might be in the future. Yeah. Danny, welcome to the show, man. I appreciate y'all having me. Dude, Absolutely. I got to start it with a curveball, man. I was sitting here speaking of the Clarksville thing. Yeah. I get a text. I have a really good friend. Um, She's a defense attorney in town. I hope you don't ever in a million years need one. But uh, she is uh, clearly, I get a text and said, oh my gosh, have you seen this about the Clarksville thing? And I was like, oh yeah, I think I heard a little bit of something. She's like, do you realize that is my, okay, I'm happily married, but that is my husband. (laughs) I was like, what do you mean? I was like, who? She's like, (laughs) Kenny. Oh, I remember (laughs) him in his days. I was sitting there Uh laughing. So this Argentine Argentinian awesome attorney thinks you walk on water. So I had to throw that out there. I might need her, you know, somebody. (laughs) So if you ever need one, which we're going to knock on wood that we don't ever need one phenomenal uh, defense attorney flow. uh, I'm I'm going to give her a little shout out and say, what's up to my boy. Can it be for flow? So wow. I appreciate that. I really do. I'm that really was a curve. That really was a curveball. I did not see that I saw, coming. I saw the text and I was like, what in the world? Because I've never gotten texts. But she's like, have you seen this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I read all about it. She's like, no, Kenny's involved. I'm like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> I was like, how does Sammy feel about this? But uh-huh. uh, see, they're both cool. It's all get out. That's so. awesome. That's Much awesome. love out there to Kenny being the Longhorn Nation. Nation is very deserved. I want to start with saying congrats on an absolutely phenomenal career in the league course at Texas and uh, just proud of you, man. You've done some great things and been a great dad and all the above. So yeah. kudos. I, I really appreciate that. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Kenny, let's start with gaming first, because yeah. how did that come to happen? Have you always been a gamer? I assume so. Yeah. And what are your real game plans uh, for uh, gamers first? I guess for me, for gamers first, we actually started in 2019, but I kind of actually went through and actually did actual real PR for the first time mm. for just recently. That's why all the media outlets get it. Um, that's the way you got to do it. Because if I tweet out my video or I tweet out an announcement, well, you know how the algorithm goes. Sometimes certain people don't even see it. It gets yeah. washed away. There's too many people tweeting and posting Instagram pictures for you even to reach the people you want to reach. So we hired Giant Noise um, PR company out of Austin, and they did a hell of a job, you know, getting it to the right people, um, whether it was, you know, ESPN, Sports Illustrated, you know, all the Longhorn, big media sites. Um, yeah, so it went good. Uh, as far as Gamers First goes, um, me, Cody, and Hunter, my other partner, started it, like I said, a year ago. And it just kind of – I was streaming all the time, but I'm, I'm also in the NFL. So, like, you can only do one or the other. One knows this with football. You can, you can only be a – you really only be a football player – or you can, you know, you can step away and choose to do something else. And, and that was really big on my decision. Um, I mean, I had multiple offers to come back, but I, it honestly wasn't that hard of a decision for me. I got, I got a chance to be around my son. They probably had the number one, you know, flag football team in the country. You know, we're actually going to the Pro Bowl in Las Vegas to compete, you know, for, for a ring. But um, just being around my son, um, being able to, you know, drive G1 as a CEO, because while I was playing in the NFL, that, that last year, it just wasn't the same. I didn't have the same energy. We didn't have the same, you know, things weren't moving the same. And I knew the way Austin's growing right now, the way this city's pumping, vibing, I couldn't leave. If I left Austin, I might miss out on this opportunity. I knew it. And, and sure enough, you know, we launched G1. I tell everybody I'm stepping away and sponsors and all types of good things are happening for me. Just, just kind of going with my heart. So. <clears throat> Yeah, man, Austin is really exploding. It's it's a yeah. good thing you brought it up. I mean, Josh and I both live in LA now. We've been moved away from from Austin mm-hmm. over four years, and uh, you know, every time I come back, something new pops up. You know, whether it's a new business or mm-hmm. um, you know, there's construction everywhere with Tesla coming in. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just really putting Austin on the map. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, they you know they got So House on South Congress. Um, I actually, me and Jay Hills, you know, opened up a gym, the Collective on South Congress. 
the fact I know Austin's blowing up because on the corner of Academy and South Congress, there's a Hermes. My, my wife loves Birkin. Oh, yes. man. The fact oh. that they even chose Austin means something is coming. They're not going to build a Hermes on the corner of Austin unless no. the Louis come in, a Gucci, a mm -hmm. Saint Prada. Louis, yeah, the whole thing. They're not going to stay by themselves. It's all about mindshare. That's why McDonald's builds next to Taco Bell. Hermes is going to be next to the top brands in the world. It's just only a matter of time for they all start popping up in Austin. Yeah. That's, well, that's funny. I didn't know that, but I'm yeah. living here for the last five years and yeah. it's insane. The last two years are a blur, but the, it's just nuts and cool how much, and I live up Northwest. So yeah. Apple and all that's coming up there yep. and, and you don't know the difference anymore from, from driving from downtown to there. So it's cool, man. And the coolest piece of that, and you alluded to coming back and clearly I, I joined DJ at an event and, and, and supported him mm -hmm. last night, the amount of guys coming back, it, mm -hmm. going into kind of some of the UT stuff. Yep. Isn't it crazy that one, you know, you were recruited by everybody on the planet, but that factored in, you know, I was like, I can see myself coming back to this city and raising my family and living yeah. forever. And, yeah. and it just, it's cool to see that in a little bit different way, because it's a different regime over there, but that's coming yeah. into fruition. Yeah. I mean, I came back, like you said, it wasn't, I mean, obviously when I was getting recruited, we were winning, you know, I'm, I'm watching you, I'm watching BY, I'm watching, you know, Earl's in front of me. I mean, I mean, it wasn't even, it wasn't even, it was an easy decision for me, but um, no, the family and the camaraderie, you know, once you come back, I think, I mean, pretty much anybody, like everybody wants to get back to Austin. I've noticed that with Longhorns. A lot of times with other teams and I've talked to people, you know, throughout my time in the league, they don't necessarily go back to like where they play co college ball at all. Yeah, Austin right. just happened to be the perfect city. Most of them come to Austin too. <laughs> Everybody wants to move here. I mean, really a lot of my do. friends. I'm just like, I know you're um, athletes. Yeah, yeah, you're athletes first as well. And I, I think the the charity event with um, yeah. with David and all that. That's at yeah. uh, you know high five. That's here in Austin. It's a huge and great event also. So man, that's cool. And yeah, and it, man, that, that's that's awesome. Yeah, David's done a good job. I mean, obviously he gets every first rounder he wants now, and they all end up coming downtown or coming to Austin for Elite Week. And I think that's only going to get bigger and bigger. And hopefully. You know, this next year we can start having combine training at the collective at Jeremy's gym. That'd be awesome just to bring because Austin's a destination spot, but a oh, lot yeah. of guys go to California to train, they go to Florida to train, you know, this Arizona to train. Mm -hmm. I think Austin would be a very, very good city for people to come to. Without a doubt, especially with, you know, all these businesses opening up that we're talking about right and mm -hmm. i think this is a good segue into kind of getting in some nil as well i mean yeah. with with the city of austin blowing up right in yep. a sense it gives these athletes more of an opportunity to work with other brands right and yep. try to get some more money out of their deals yeah no doubt i mean i remember being in college and people always say man they're so lucky they got a full ride but there's sometimes where i had to borrow somebody's bebo books now like you know, I have to ask Case McCoy, like, you know, some of those guys didn't use all their bucks. I'd be like, hey, man, let me get a swipe. Like, it, it really was a struggle. I, I, I was poor. My mom dropped me off with $20 and was like, good luck. Save your money. So it's not what people think as far as, oh, their books are paid for, their school's paid for. There's so many other things that factor. And, you know, in the way that NCAA has been, they just give you, honestly, Quan knows it's like the, really the bare minimum. If you want to play, stay in a nice spot, you, you got to kind of side hustle, you know, a little bit to, to pay for that spot really, or link up with four people. And then you got four guys in the house. So I think this is going to give kids a good opportunity to be able to focus on, you know, school first and foremost, football, um, and be better players and better men. Yeah. I don't Especially think people no bring that up. Now I was going to say, I don't think people really realize that or think of student athletes having to do a side hustle. That's really not something that's like a topic of conversation yeah. and it takes away from school because you have to work to support yourself and you have to go to practice all the time. So yeah. if you're in practice and you're working, when does your schoolwork come into handy? Yeah. And you know, it's, I mean, obviously we all know football is a dangerous game, right? Yeah. And so you kind of have to be prepared at all times. Uh, Kenny, what was it like? I have to know, because just so you know, I'm from New York. Yeah. I get into Texas. I'm going to Texas. I decide in April it's the draft. Mm. So I'm a senior in high school. I go to the draft. It's my favorite event in sports, rock yeah. my Texas hat. Yeah. 15th overall pick 2013 yeah. Yeah. Kenny I'm going crazy with all my boys. Cause I decided to go to Texas nice. and draft there. So what was it like getting drafted now after hearing all this about you, you know, um, kind of struggling a little bit in college monetarily. Yeah, it, it was crazy. Honestly, it was kind of like, just like, a, like finally, like, cause I've been working my whole life for that moment. And it was almost like, oh, finally, like everything, everything that I did, it all, it all came to fruition, honestly, like getting on that stage. I barely even remember walking across it, um, you know, dapping up Roger Goodell, 
my mom's there, my whole family's there, you know, Dave is there, obviously my agent, Coach Akina's there, probably the most influential man like I've ever had in my life. Um, you know, it was, it, it was a huge moment and it was special for me because it was in New York. They asked me if I wanted to go. I was like, do you want to stay at home? I was like, no, I want, like, I want to go. I want to go to New York. I'd never been before. I wanted to go walk across that stage and be with other players and get that, get, let, really let my mom experience that, honestly, because we didn't really travel. And that was the first time she really got to get, get out of our hometown. So I was like, hey, let's, let's go to New York. And it was great. That's cool. And it almost it kind of segues way into some of the stuff in IL and all that going on. Yeah. Clearly, that happens for you. You earn every ounce of it. You have a phenomenal career. Yeah. But going back to a little bit of your story that we all – had share with yeah. you know it was, it was a struggle bus you know certain levels of you know Sometimes. life and, yeah. and and in college is that why you're so philanthropic it's why you give back so much like being a part of Clarksville and different things like that to yeah. the current guys and, and folks coming back to the city yeah definitely I I just I, I I look back on the things that I went through and some of those things I don't want these kids to have to worry about they work too hard I mean we you know we're up at 5 a.m you got to work. You got to go to 8 a.m. class after you just did two hours of, of work. It's just too hard. Like I can't, I don't want these kids worrying about having money for breakfast or lunch when they're putting all that work in of being a student and an athlete. So, I mean, this is the, it was an easy decision for me. There's, I mean, obviously everybody knows Texas, there's plenty of money. There's the donors. There's just lots of people that love, love them some Texas sports. And uh, as long as we get the right people together, I think this is going to be huge. And also for recruiting, I think right now, like if you're not offering money, like for NIL to kids, those kids, a lot of kids aren't going to come. Like I was dead poor coming out of high school. I would make a decision based on, am I going to have opportunities to make a little extra money besides my scholarship check? And that's just me. Um, I love the game. I, 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 I've always loved the game. Didn't, didn't ever play it for money, but, um, but as far as it's, it's real when you struggle, it's real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you bring up, and you bring making up, these. Go ahead. I was just say you bring up a good point. Just having the right people involved, right? And we look at who's on the board of this Clarksville Collective. It's you yeah. know you and TJ Ford and other people who played. You know, and yep. that really just it, it speaks volumes about the kind of people that we have come through our programs. You know, yep. basketball and football. Yep. I was talking to Trey Hardy today, Olympian. He wants to get involved with track. I'm going to connect him and Nick Shuley. Nick Shuley is like kind of the creator of this Clarksville Collective collective mm -hmm. um, i think trey would be a great ambassador for olympic sports they don't get near the amount of dollars that football you know basketball and baseball get and then some and some of these some of these people are the fastest in the world the, the longest jumpers in the world but right. the money just isn't there in track you know so i can only imagine what they go to on a go through on a day-to-day -day basis in college yeah and even baseball a lot of people don't know baseball get what 11 11 scholarships you yeah. know usually in baseball not one of them are on full scholarship Whoa. A lot of people don't know that, do they? Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, so them having these opportunities is so big. It's and I know there's a naysayers. Oh, what about the small schools? What about this? Truth of the matter is, look at I guess Cincinnati would be the closest thing to a small school to the current final four. But if you look back 20 years, not a lot of small schools are winning natics. It's just the way that, from a football standpoint. No. It just doesn't happen a lot. So you might as well start compensating folks, start taking care of them. And the only thing that's going to help the small schools is going to 12, a real playoff in 12, 12 uh, teams, yeah. not, you know, th this whole idea of NIL not taking care of his business. And then on the small schools, they have some alum that got some bank too. Exactly. They need to find a way to, to, to take care of their crew and, and separate than the university too. So I, I'm with you, man. It was cool. And so many situations of us, but then, you know, I played baseball, came back. So, so many of our boys not naming names, man, that it was a struggle bus, you know, even mm -hmm. you know, getting dropped off or, you know, having something to do with, you know, grades or, or not necessarily being able to go straight into the dorm and all of that. This is just mm -hmm. going to be big for so many of us, the women, you know, the Cat Osman, female athlete of the year, man, mm -hmm. she, she would have been worth all kinds of things, you Crazy. know, back in her day. And, and still she goes and play pro forever and have a side job. So I'm proud of what is becoming. I know it was kind of just done randomly. And hey, here we go. We're going to figure it out as it's going. But we needed to step up to the plate. And you, TJ, I know I talked to some folks. They're talking about Katie. They're talking about Trey. Mm -hmm. Talking about so many of us being on this board to kind of help the, these guys and, and eventually ladies out. So, yeah. man, I'm, I'm looking forward to it and what it's going to do on so many levels. The rules say we can't 
talk to recruits about it. However, the pub is going to get, it's already gotten. <laughs> come on, come on now. <laughs> come on now. Yeah, it, this is going to help recruit. recruit and I, yeah. from, what I, from what I hear is not being talked about, of course, but it's already helping recruiting. So yeah. it's going to help us get back to where we need to be. Yeah, the recruit social media runs the world. As soon as that, as soon as a Clarkville Collective tweet goes out and goes live, all those recruits are going to see it. Every coach is retweeting because they want them to see it. Like it ain't, right. you can say that it, they ain't talked to them, but you know how that goes. Everyone, yeah, you, know, it's, you Google it's the first thing that comes up. So, the, all the rumors with Quinn Ewers moving, he's in the transfer portal. We all see yeah. that. Yeah, and crazy numbers like four million dollars being thrown at him. The guy hasn't even played a snap for us. That's something that's being yeah. tossed around. Are you for? that in a sense of like bringing in a guy at all cost um i mean i followed a situation i didn't i i when he left you know he decommitted and went to Ohio state was it a money thing like i i've been following yeah it, he got a mill he had more yeah i mean because then when it, when it gets to those type of numbers then you start questioning like like what are you doing it for are you gonna even make it to your senior year and like right. even be able to go to make generational money because that that believe it or not all that um NIL money going to dry up one day. Quan knows is that money don't yeah. like you start taking care of a few people and paying some bills and living in the yeah. and taxes and the rest. The, that you mill, better be managing it right. That mill is going to be like 700 racks after the taxes, maybe 650. And then you pay a couple things. So, um, but I'm not going to say I don't want him to be our quarterback because I want to win, baby. I don't even we go get Art Manning. I can't believe we let the kid from Westlake get out of our, you know. I know he's going uh, to Clemson. Yeah, David. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go there, but anyways, we were, uh, I met the kid and it's unfortunate he's going to Clemson, but, um, I was just having this conversation with Cedric today. I was talking to Cedric golden and he was just, I was just the quarterback drives the team in college football. Um, you can have a great defense, you can have a great offense, but if you don't have a QB, it's hard to get to the tippy top Quan, You know, that playing with sure. b paying with Colt. Um, that is the number one thing we haven't had at Texas the last for however long like Sam was a good player. That's not discrediting anybody, but to get to that next step where we're pr- year after year, we're winning not even 10, I'm talking 11, 12 plus games. Yeah. It's elite quarterback play. play. It's elite quarterback play. And it's always been like that. And Texas was fortunate enough when I was there, but good defense is going with good quarterback play too. Um, so we have That's to when find you get to that the guy. Final four level. Yeah, yeah we yeah, had to find that guy. I remember yeah. them, Robert Griffin was a good friend of mine. I remember them telling him, yeah, you might be a safety. Well, he wins the Heisman. You know, Johnny was a good friend of mine. Well, you might be a safety. He wins the Heisman. I'm just like, literally, I, I have a nightmares. Flashback oh, my God. Guys were saying, Andrew Luck, uh, we're not going to offer you because we're offering Garrett Gilbert the next year. And we don't want to make him mad. All right, cool. Damn near won the Heisman. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so the best prospect. Uh, yeah, best prospect of all time, Andrew Luck. Garrett was was supposed to be, too, you know? Yeah. And, and there's no disrespect to, to him. He's still playing. I don't know if he's still backing up or playing, but good friend of mine. But at the same time, it is what it is. Um there's a lot of missed opportunities. Like there's a lot of things I can point to when people ask what happened. Well, I know what happened, but you know, um, yeah. linemen, how many old linemen have been drafted in, you know, in the top, in the last 10 years, really like top, top, you know, recently we've had Sam and we've had Connor, but other than that, there was a drought. I think it was since 06, since you were there, Quan, that we didn't have anybody drafted. Yeah. Huge drought. Huge that's drought. And that's the I- trenches boys. Like you, You've always been known to have them boys in the chat. I remember just watching Stud and Blaylock and all them boys. They're like, I know they ran the team, right? You know, Big Tony Hills. Like, I just remember these guys being staples on the team. And, you know, that's that we've lost a little bit of that. I'd love, we- love to know from you because yeah. you are a DB. Yeah. We were once DBU. Yeah. How do we get back to that? I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you see as a defensive well, back? I mean, we're, not- we're missing a bit of cute. Portion and Dwayne Aquino. That's we, we, should have, we should have paid Dwayne Aquino five million dollars a year. Like <laughs> that was the biggest L ever happened. And I've heard we tried to get him back multiple. Like he's happy. He's with his family. At, you know, at Stanford. Like he's it's Cali. He he ain't coming. You know what I'm saying? Like he loves that mm-hmm. weather. He don't want that humidity no more. He's from Hawaii. Like, but um, it started with Coach Aquino. It started with recruiting. He brought the right guys in, and then he developed those guys into becoming elite players. When I got there, I had a torn ACL right out of high school. Jesus. I was playing in a knee brace. I was on kickoff, and all I cared about was just breaking the three-man red wedge because Sergio Kendall, Earl Thomas, Lamar Houston, you know, Sam Ocho, Emmanuel Ocho, Blake Gideon, Aaron Williams, Chris, you know, Curtis Brown, Shikey Brown, they're watching me, right? But I, I had to – Dion, Beasley, my dog, the whole crew. Dion, all of them. Like, those were 
you know, Ke- Keenan Robinson. I, I mean, I can name everybody. Yeah, um, I was expected to go make a play. <laughs> the whole freaking defense got drafted. And that's why we ended up in the national championship versus Bama, which we could have won. But, you know, Marshall Darius hits Colt in the shoulder. He doesn't feel his shoulder the rest of the game. Garrett does a great job. And I thought we might win that, you know, versus Bama in 2010. But anyways, those leaders, the, that's the reason why I played. And, and then I ended up being, you know, who I was after four years. But I came in with that mentality. And we need more of that for, for DBU to get to get to wake up again, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, but hey, hold on. We, we, we can't. He reeled off all those names, and it, it, it seems normal, but that's a huge portion. Oh, yeah. Like things are very different now. Those level cats. Uh, yeah. Dude, he was, like he he started, he's like, by the fifth or fourth name, I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, dude. I forget all those guys in one yeah. unit. It's, I mean, yeah, but you were on a five and seven team. Like we just went five mm-hmm. and seven. Honestly, we were talking about it the other day, and I was, we were the oh, number one team in the de- uh, number one defense in the uh, we were number eight in the country, number one defense in the Big 12. And we went five and seven. What is that? You know what that Kwan, I want to say it was offense, but it was offense. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> it is offense. Yeah, 100 percent Bless Case McCoy's heart. Like he was throwing skippers on curl routes. Like you can't do that. Like you feel me? Like hey, I love Case I, mean, I love him to death. I, I was like, when I started doing the radio thing, I, I I never told this story. I've never said a word on game day to players. Yeah. But Case was struggling a little buzz, a little bit in Baylor, Big 12 championship, Max last year. Yeah. And it was a couple of them. He, it was really cold and all of that, but he didn't hit Malcolm Brown out of the backfield about four times. And you're talking 15, 20 yard games. The game was three to three at halftime. And the one time, because I was early and, and didn't do it as much. And of course, Case wore six. I said, please and come on six. Give us a chance, bro. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. That's the only time I did that. And yeah. I felt a little bad about it. But at the yeah. same time, you know, they were playing for a lot. That was a big 12 championship. That was yeah. you know, so much at stake. Yeah. And he's a, I mean, he's a great dude. He's, you know, obviously successful now. Great family. But uh, it is what it is. We all have to be, we all have to look, look each other in the, you know, in the mirror. You can't hold back a little bit. You have to say for what it is. I know it's tough when you're doing media and like, I, I'd always, people ask if I ever wanted to talk on TV and the hardest thing would be, would be to talk about players after I've been in that locker room. And I'm sure it's an adjustment it's tough. for everybody that's an athlete, but at the same time, doing it now a little bit, you understand, like, like it just, it's part of your job. And some of those, you know, those answers are tough, but it is what it is. But obviously we got some things to fix and hope, hopefully start and get it turned around. I'll just hope they give him enough time. I didn't think tar- Charlie had enough time. No I, think by, by, I think by the time guys, got old enough to be able to play, he was already gone. Like, that's just my yeah, opinion. For real. I wasn't a man until my junior year, and then I became, like, whatever I was. You know what I'm saying? But, like, my first two years, I was a knucklehead just playing ball for, for the seniors, right? Like, I didn't – it takes time, so. Yeah, it really does. And truth be told, it's something I, I talk a lot about when I when our current team is, KB, what you get is and you start talking, the best players, as long as you're speaking facts, as long as you're being respectful – they don't care if you talk about their game because they know because you, you can't say anything to me or you or, or the, the, some of the guys who have played and been successful that we don't already know. We're exactly. harder on ourselves. And that's right. what I think we're missing a little bit because I know that before it got even crazy in this whole portal thing, you know, I heard they coach a couple of guys harder and they instantly went to the portal. Then, you know what? I, I wish you success wherever you go, but you don't need to be here because you're never going to get to where you need to get if you can't get coached up. So yeah, I think some awesome. of that mentality yeah, yeah. and mindset is where we really leadership is another thing you said yeah. we've really been missing. Yeah. And like Coach Akina coached me so hard. I remember he told me I was nothing but a waste of like water and tape one time. I, <laughs> it was my freshman year. <laughs> freshman year. Freshman <laughs> year. <laughs> cool. going out, you know, we went in big games, but I'm also, I'm in them streets too now. Like Sergio, them, they want to pop bottles. Like, KB, come to this spot. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, we're winning. We're 12 and 0, whatever. And yeah. coach is like, hey, and one day, you're not, it's, it's not going to last long. So basically, I was coached. I remember Coach Muschamp, who's a great, one of the best defensive coaches I've ever had. Yeah. Um, dog cussing us all the time. But that made me want to be better. It didn't drive. I, I, hell no, I'm not going to go to the transfer portal. He, he's counting on me. If you're coaching me hard, you want me to be the best player I can possibly be. That's just. That's how I was. I was raised. I don't know. I'm from Brownwood, Dude, Texas, blue exactly. collar football. No, same thing. Like, I remember I got a must champ story about me and Ship. <laughs> we were in a spring game, and I remember we, we we were winning at that particular point. We would go in, we could get on the sideline, and he's cussing all all the whole defense out. 
what how the hell are y'all getting killed by those two midgets <laughs> crazy <stuff. laughs> he Just said crazy all that stuff. and then you fast forward to you know ohio state and all of that he's like i know those two are gonna get it done we need to do our end and that's what it's about that's the cool piece of it yeah sure, he said that in competition fun competition yeah but those dudes you and we wanted it and i appreciate it and of course he'd come over and be like dude hell of a catch that's what we're talking about so i like just, it baby you know, and i can already hear him saying yeah, it, right? <laughs> and that's yeah. how it works and that's how it rolled and getting coached hard having that mindset having thick skin but is it thick skin or is it that i'm always trying to get better perspective that that we all fortunately yeah. play with that again that's just struggle busting now and i'm with you i i do believe in sark he's really really good dude um you know just yeah that first year was rough he ain't working with nothing out there. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm watching, I'm seeing like worthy star going to be a first round pick one day, write it right now. Let's see. Oh yeah. I hope God just, you know, keeps him healthy. Yeah. He's a star, but he was a freshman. He was the leader. <laughs> like yeah. best, player, best player in the field by far. Both back sides. When I, back when I was, when I was a freshman, I was on kickoff. I was the worst player. <laughs> I was the first round pick. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Think about that. That's the yeah. talent yeah. level. That's like, a great point. That's I, was, great- I, I couldn't get on the field. I wasn't good enough, but I was a potential first round pick. That's nuts. Yeah. I mean, that's Talk like, I mean, perspective. That's, that's some yeah. real, I, that's something I haven't talked, but that's some real perspective. We got recruited by Mac and he, we, he wasn't like, Hey, you're going to come in and play as a freshman. He's hell like, hey, no. You, hell no. He's uh, like, Hey, you're going to learn from the best. And then it's going to be your turn. And, and that's ultimately was our mindset. We're going to go learn from the best. We're going to go watch them. We're going to go bust heads on whatever special teams, which is also, by the way, you know? first round pick starting on special teams. Your special teams were better on every level because of that. Oh, so yeah. it's, just, it's just a very, very different um, roster and scenario nowadays oh. than, than what we had. And that's what Sark and the crew are going to have to get to. And honestly, some of the things going on, whether you talk about it specifically to a recruit or not, some of the things going on are going to be what really, really help us get back to that level. Oh yeah, no doubt. Like you said, the mentality and the culture has to change first. Um, yep. And then obviously you got to have good players, talent, you got to have talent. And then you got to mix that in with the great, great culture and a great mentality. If you don't have the players. They don't know how, no matter how hard you're trying, you're just going to get beat. And that's how back in the day, that's how we used to beat down on people. We'd be so talented. Plus we had a good culture. That's how you end up being at 63, 70 to zero versus Colorado in the big 12 championship. That's just <laughs> right. the way it goes. Right. Like, right. so, I mean, it's just, it's just a shame that like, you know, we look at the OU game and we go, Oh, had we won that game or had not dropped the ball or been able to close our season would have been differently. And that just kind of is a testament to our mentality that that yeah. one game can wash the whole season and it ruins everything. Yeah. And it glosses over everything. You know, it's, you got to change that. You got to be able to close. We were winning almost every single game. We lost at one point. Yeah. Minus, of course, the Kansas game. Yeah. And I've been on those. I've been in those games. I've been on teams. You just don't even know how to win. Like you're in it the whole time. And Quan, you, you probably know, like, well, you had a lot of success. So maybe you weren't in those losing teams. But um, <laughs> when I got to the league, I got to the league. Quan's just being nice, shaking his head, like, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But when you get to the league, it's different, right? Like you're going to have times where you struggle. And I, on the best teams I've been on, we always finish well. Like with the Titans, when yeah. I got there, I, I truly feel like, you know, it was Vrabel's first year my first year i feel like we shifted the culture those we were eight and eight seven you know seven and nine every year all of a sudden that becomes 10 and six or 12 you know 12 and four you know 13 and three because you start finish you start winning those close games and that's what good teams do they finish those close games that's the only difference it's 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 one it's one or two plays people always say after film oh if we wouldn't have done it well yeah of course it's only one or two plays if it's 20 plays you're terrible like right? like exactly. people always try to say like oh well if we would have been just a little bit better here we would have won of course right so for me it's just finishing games that starts with culture and mentality yeah there's there's a lot of guys on this on this roster who might not hate losing as much you know i mean we look at the video that was taken right of of our coach on the on the bus you know shoot out the team and like come on like you, your that's your first thought is to take your camera out after you lose like a heartbreaking game. Like you just don't hate losing enough. Yeah, that was probably I was talking about it earlier, and I almost teared up talking about it because that was that's a low that's a low point for Texas. That's a very low. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Point. It's embar like like I would have like I don't know about you, Quan, but the guys in the locker room back in the day, like you might have got backhanded. Like you know, what I'm saying in oh, the locker 100%. room, like, like straight up, like you already know, <laughs> like. Yeah, yeah. like 
you can't even talk about what have happened because you know it would have been a charge right it, so like it, it would have been it would have been it would put it like this not only you get so that was the first that when i saw that the hair on my neck stood up and <laughs> it wasn't even about i the i listened to it multiple times because i didn't even listen to what coach was saying i was like this mofo is recording a coach in the bus and he getting cussed out. Who the hell does that? That I is never. crazy. And, and really, sure, we, we kept sliding and, and what some would say rock bottom and having a really rough season. But yeah. to your point, Kenny, that's when I knew I was like, oh, now, fortunately, I'd been the sideline stuff and all that. I did know before then, but that being public, I was like, that's horrible, but there's going to be some light at the end of that tunnel because yeah. people now see our issues. Like yeah, that, it's embarrassing. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. Uh, it's embarrassing, and that just showed you. Okay, that's why they're losing. That when I, as soon as I saw that, uh, I'm like, oh man, we got we got this type of cancer that's infiltrated the team. Oh no, like you can't do that. Like, and I know this world's different, Quan. Like when we when we were in college, Facebook, Twitter, that it wasn't as hot as it is now. Now it's about everything. Impression, thank three, you, Lord. <laughs> Yeah, Instagram. <laughs> shoot, I might not have been the same player I was if I got caught up in all that like Seriously? self self promoting hype that is part of the game today. It's a part of our world. Like, you want to make some money, get a whole bunch of followers, promote people's products. It yeah, is what it is. It, it's That's wild. But, I mean, that was that was one of the number one rules when I, I was a walk on with your brother was there, Kevin. Yeah, and that was one of the number one rules on, under Charlie's team is no social media. Like, don't post anything you hear about in the locker room. Like, what ha what happens in this facility stays in this facility. That's number like one rule. That's the one rule. That's like the worst thing you can do on a football. Like that's the number one thing you can't break. What happens here stays here. It says that yeah. on every outside of every locker room in the country. I promise. Yeah. Every year here happens here. You see, it stays here. I swear, I've seen that. Literally, that's in the football bible. Like yeah. that's what I was about to say, Nick. The crazy <laughs> part is that Charlie had to say that because right. us as players during our time, you already knew it. We already knew it, and. Sure, you said it. You were saying it about some not necessarily football related. It's what we were trying to keep in the locker room. But yeah, really, um, it, it was no man. It, it just it's so known that you don't even get close to doing some crazy stuff like especially that. Especially Bo. What a good I've had Bo was my cut, like just the dog, just somebody yeah. you want to just run through a brick wall for. Like he'll fight the other coach if he needs to, type of cut. Like he, <laughs> He just, and he'll win too. Yeah, he's just the guy that you just you just don't like. And I'm not saying you do it to anybody, but Bo, come on, man, I'd have been yeah. terrified once the once it got found. Like everybody found out. Oh my god, bro, I probably would have just left the university straight up, like in yeah. an embarrassment. Like, yeah. and, and honestly, I don't know what happened to the kid, but if he did, I, I I still hope he finds a way to be successful in life. But I but I but I hope he he went elsewhere. Yeah, I think that that we don't need that. Yeah. No, and that just. That put an exclamation mark on the when everybody asked the question, like what happened to Texas? You just go to point to that moment, and there's nothing else you got to say, really. Yep. No. Sure. Understand. Anybody that played any kind of sport, team sport, no, that's you don't you don't do that bull crap. Oh, you just don't do it. I'm thinking. Well, and by the way, you brought up Kevin. How, how's how's fam doing, man? I I'm, I'm not good. that good on social to be honest. Oh, he's good. But he's he has problem. a beautiful family. We, we oh, yeah. I, I guess we're connected somehow on there. And yeah, uh, how's how brother doing, man? He's good. He's in Dallas. He's working, just doing his thing. He's you know pumping out kids like me. We all need to slow <laughs> down. But I just I just recently saw him for Thanksgiving. So yeah, he's doing great. I mean, obviously he misses it. He loves his horns. He's you know he talks to me all the time about this and that and you know how it is once you're out the game like once you when you when you're watching the game from the couch it's just a lot different than having that helmet strapped on it's a lot easy to be critical but we need to be critical you know right so well and then especially i think the hardest thing for a lot of us is we can't we're not in a position well two things nick even said it earlier they don't like hate losing enough and we do, and then we can't do anything about what we're watching. That that's where it just get harder. You all you can do is talk about it. It's almost therapeutic. It's like, man, these fools. This happened. That happened. I didn't see this. I don't know why they're doing this. And you just got to talk through it because you do want us to be great. We do want to. Yeah, we're having families and all that. But man, we're ready to go to that natty so we can all go together, have exactly. a very good time, cheer on our boys, and have those experiences that a lot of cats when we play got to experience. Yeah, I want to go, you know, go outside of DKR and, you know, tailgate with my whole family. Yeah. Oh, we're going to whoop on from them boys. And 
I don't know. We'll get back to it. I know yeah. we will. I'm trying to be positive. It's <laughs> possible. I mean, y'all went to nine and four after y'all won five. It's so possible. I mean, there's like you're talking about like it's not like there are 20 plays in the games. There's one or two plays yeah. per game that if you change those plays, you change a couple, you know, instances. We're not five and seven. We're like eight. We're eight and four. You know, eight and four. We're nine and four. Yeah. So we're in like every game. It's just about changing that mentality and getting the right guys in. I mean, it's in my eyes like you know, over over Sean could have been a pro. Maybe yeah. not like a top, you know, third round pick, but he could be he's probably a fifth round pick. No, he can play. He can play. But, but he's coming back. Yeah. So that at least goes shows something that some of these guys, you know, it was a slap in the face to some of these players. And they unfinished kinda, business. It's unfinished yeah. business. And you don't want to be, you don't want to go to the NFL on a team that was historically that. But I, it's all, they already think a little bit less of Texas right now because the players yeah. you're putting out. Like I had to answer so many questions, even when I was there, like at the combine, like, are you going to be soft? I'm like, no, I promise you. Like, you're like, you straight up, like, because there's been, there's been times, right, Quan, where it's been like, you, you shift up a little bit once you get to league. Those are questions that I had to answer. Um, and I know right now for a fact, they think that, right? So, it's oh, yeah, like, dude, I had to answer the same ones. That, yeah. And we took it, we were offended by it. And, and, yeah, and because thing everybody of, was kind of tough to me. Yeah. Like, so, I'm like, who are you talking about here, right? So, <laughs> yeah, we were offended by it, but we had to answer those. And yeah. I, 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 I said this to someone else. I said that the, the biggest issue I have, uh, not to, to go on and on about it, was we've become everything people thought. And, and, and when it comes to that softness, when it comes to, you know, and again, we keep we got another, you know, new South end zone. We got all this pretty shiny stuff. But, you know, as, as I told somebody one time, I said, we got a Porsche body with a smart car engine. And that's <laughs> ultimately what, where we are, you yeah. know, from a standpoint of what, what I've seen on the field. And hopefully now with the new staff and, and all, I think we're going to get to where we need to be. Yeah, right. I think the problem is you in order to recruit, you have to have a nice facility. <laughs> but sure. at the same time, you got to be building a nice program. We kind of got behind on the program part and we're playing catch up. We're trying to catch Oregon, Alabama, Ohio state every year for recruiting purposes. The locker gets redesigned. I, I swear to God, like it's, <laughs> right. it's like when me and you were there, it wasn't, we didn't have the Xbox well, and all that. We were like, worried about that locker. We were taking care of things on the field. But. Yeah. Like I didn't have, I didn't, I wasn't hanging out in the locker room. Like it, I was worried about football practice. And then, you know, after my study, hang out with my boys, it's just, it's a different age. The whole, the yeah. game shifted, right? Like it's all about the glamor, what you can do for the kids. It's just a different, we're in a different time. And honestly, I think it's harder for a guy to be locked in and love football in this day and age, right? Like it's, it's, there's so many more distractions and there were so many, you know, when you were there, there was far less. When I was there, there's a little bit more. And now it's just out of this world, right? So it's, yeah. good luck. It is good luck. <laughs> yeah. Right. Good yeah. luck. See how they're working out and, 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 we just got to figure out how to find them dogs because I, there's some schools out there and, and crazy uh, coming back to the Texas piece of it. Yeah. We have them here in this state, but they're leaving now. So how, how do we keep them here you so that win. they can be a part of those national championship opportunities and, and winning teams and all the above. So we got to figure that out. And again, kudos to, to what's going on with Clarksville and all of that, because yeah, awesome. I think that's a way to do it. I yeah. really do. I, I think understand. we got to start winning again. That way recruiting starts going back our way. Once the recruiting starts going, that's when you start churning out. That's when you start rebuilding that program where maybe a guy leaves early. Maybe a guy, you know, gets drafted. We have somebody stepping. That's what you see with Bama. Yeah. Every time somebody gets drafted, it's like it's this a wagon wheel. Good. I'm yeah. like, but that's a, but that's years and years of a program that works, right? Mm -hmm. As soon as the receiver goes, gets drafted, Mechie steps in. Mechie tears his ACL. Well, now Javante Williams is a first round pick. Yeah. Like, what is going on? Like, hey, they're just reload, man. That's all they're doing. And they yeah. got to that point by winning, right? I remember mm -hmm. when Saban first got there, like they just they started winning, and the recruits got a little bit better, a little bit better. And of course, you're going to get every five star now. People want to win. Yeah. They don't care about your facilities. If you yeah. win, it don't matter. Alabama, what's in Alabama? Nothing but football, right? Yes, like, sir. But they win. The distractions. Hey, they care about <laughs> that that trophy, that trophy That's room. It. You're gonna get I you're guaranteed like you go to Alabama, it's gotta be probably like a 90% chance in four years you're gonna get one. It has to be something crazy like that. Like they're in it, they're in the mix every year. They're number one again. They got this first of all, this kid Will Anderson's completely robbed of a Heisman final. I don't yeah, know if you guys they saw put that. Hutchins in there. That was a little bit of publicity stunt, I think. I yeah, mean, I mean, I was a Hutch fan, but then I saw these stats good. comparatively. I was like, Pretty Oh my good. god, that kid Anderson just dominated the year and got overshadowed. And you bring it up, Kenny. You said at the top, 
in college, you really nowadays need a quarterback to win it all. And when Bama was really good, they had McRoy, they had McCarron, then all of a sudden they get Tua, and then all of a sudden they get Mac Jones, right? Yeah. When you get those quarterbacks. When when McCarron was there, you know, we probably could have beat them then. And they had a couple like John Parker Wilson back. I remember those guys, but now they're starting to get the top tier quarterbacks. Yeah, buddy. That's when it gets scary, right? And then Bryce Young. This cat, bro. What is he, a freshman? Yes, man. Freshman. Probably going to win it. Uh, I think a red shirt freshman. I think it's a landslide. It's landslide. Yeah. He's, he's going to win. It's over. He's, my, he's minus he just did 3, that to Georgia's defense. The, nine, the number one defense, what, in the last, like, 10 years? They said something crazy, like the best Bro, defense in the last hey, 20 years. Before before that game, they had given up 83 points all year. They dropped a 40 bomb on them, bro. They dropped a 40 bomb on well, them. I mean. Half of, 50% of the points they gave up all year in the championship game. And their best wild. receiver, Mechie, tore his ACL early. Like, right. Still started bombing them up. Yeah. I mean, that just shows you what, like, I, I kind of knew, because I remember when people used to always say defense wins championships. And the other, I don't know if y'all remember when Saban said something, he was like, good defense don't beat great offense anymore. Great offense in college. Yeah, yeah I remember him saying that too. He said that, and I'm like, damn, he's right, bro. Like, it's and You know, when I, I when I, I heard that also when, um damn, which game? It was uh, with KC. When Mahomes and them won it, I was like, man, I was like, I think this type this is just turned. There's a shift because the There's offense, the rules and the, the referees, it's already changing, right? Like yeah. you can't oh, really yeah. touch anybody. You know that even being an offensive guy, I'm sure you could tell. Like you oh, touch a quarterback, flag. Good. If you touch a receiver, if you don't turn to look for the ball, even if you play the ball well, flag. It's like automatic flags. You can't even hit no more. Receivers can can catch the ball across the middle. Now you don't have to worry about being hit. You had to right. be tough back in your day because you might get your your block knocked off. <laughs> yeah. Now. You know, all, it, it's a win-win. Either they're going to get a 15-yard penalty or you're going to catch the ball free, right? So, yeah. every I think now it's people want to – people are building teams that score points. If you, if you can you can feel it, right? So sure. it, you're exactly right. It's, it's a big issue for Georgia. It's a big – like, if Georgia was not able to keep up with them offensively, they yeah, weren't going to win that game, and that was it. I mean, the thing with Michigan, thing with Cincinnati even, it's like at the end of the day, like – I think the Auburn game was a black spot, but who's really going to keep up with Alabama offensively? Probably no one. And honestly, like if our defense, if, if Texas was a defense was a little bit better, I think worthy, honestly, we get the right quarterback in there. No, no offense against Thompson. He did have a good year. Good year. Worthy, Great worthy year. is a sophomore Bijan back healthy. We have pieces around on offense to really take that step and be that offensive team. Yeah. We have and a first some, round some pick. Guys in the yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have some. a first round pick at, at, at two skill positions. Yeah. We're really good. I'm talking about, Top two, two, three at, at their position in the country. Oh, yeah. All we got possibly get three if Wiley though. gets it going. Wiley has a first round body. Yeah. No, 100%. Yes. Um, it's Quan's so, favorite player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to ball out. Bro. I know the whole year. I remember our first episode together. Quan was like, we need to get this guy Wiley involved before the season yeah. started. So, yeah, we got the piece. We just got to plug, we got to plug somebody in. I wouldn't even mind, like, I think some, t- some t- uh, teams are taking advantage of por- uh, transferring. You know, guys are transferring to big schools too and becoming like Joe Burrow going to uh, LSU from Ohio State. Like, there's guys out there that we could get, right? That would transfer to Texas knowing they could, you know, take over our program. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was, I was going to tweet this the other day today, but it was, I was like, QB, whoever's out there, please, you'll be the most powerful man in Texas if you, if yes. you come in ball. Like, Bro. you want to be famous and you want everything in the world, come to Texas and be a baller. Oh, man. You don't even need to go to the league because you're gonna you're gonna be in a penthouse. You're gonna be but, taken care of yeah. that, forever. That's part of, part of the reason why. That's part of the reason why. Like, if Arch Manning comes to Texas and he he brings Texas football back, like, <gasps> is he great? Is he the greatest Manning of all time already? No, like, is that what's gonna, gonna, gonna happen? To us? I'm yeah. telling you, the governor's gonna come, like. Yeah. We're gonna have a statue made of this man just because that's how that's how bad we want to win. That's how bad the fans want to win. That's how bad the alumni, the donors. Everybody wants to win. That's why if I was a quarterback and I was number one, let me go say, let, let me go be that guy that brings Texas back. You want some juice? Come get this juice, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's the same like, thing as like I say about like the Knicks, honestly. If you want to be the Mecca of basketball, go in for the New York Knicks, the garden, and you'll be the king yeah. of the NBA. Like you'll, you would be a god in basketball. Yeah. And I think, same thing with Texas football. Yeah. People are a little bit, I think like with the Knicks, they've, they've lost a little bit and people are kind of scared to do it. Yeah. But somebody's yeah. going to step up and take the, take the reins. Mm-hmm. And when they do, Talk about, you know, NIL money. It's going to be, you know, yep. I mean, I don't even take know a pay cut to go to the league for at least, <laughs> yeah, for at least yeah. the first contract. Arch Manning, Arch Manning comes and balls out. Like, say he comes and balls out his freshman year. 
he literally might make less his first year in the league. I swear. I would say, at, at, hey, that first contract, he's going to make less. As, as, if, he, as if he needs it, though. We're, yeah, right. like, <laughs> we're talking five to ten million a year. I'm promised, you know, like in yeah. money. I bet if he if he comes and and does it. So we'll see. It's I'm wild. hoping it hoping it happens. We need to send this podcast to him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for real. KV, um, we, no, we no, ask one more question for you. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. We ask all our guests this. Ending yeah. on a great note, your favorite memory as a Longhorn could be from you playing you oh. with your boys, anything. Your favorite memory as a Texas Longhorn. Uh, without a doubt, beating Texas a in the last time. Getting that pick on the sideline, getting my feet in, wearing Fozzie's number. Coach Akina going ballistic, like doing the splits in the air. It wasn't even a, <laughs> not even a discussion. Um, Ryan <laughs> Tannehill trying to throw it to Jeff Fuller. Have a crazy disguise on the line. I go from the line of scrimmage all the way out to the sideline. Pick it off. We sealed that Quandre balls. I remember Carrington ball. AP was out there with me. I think Marquise Goodwin had a return, a long return. I mean, it was just incredible. Like it wasn't even that great of a year, but we beat Texas a and the last time we played them. That's all that matters to me. Like yes, I don't sir. even care. Yes, sir. Um, Jay Tuck hitting the kick. Now he's the best kicker to ever play the game. Um, it's a lot of great memories. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Was, did you, have you ever said anything to Tannehill about it? No, actually – I haven't yet. It's weird. Like we haven't talked, we haven't spoke on it. I, mean, <laughs> I know he won't bring it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's having an, I mean, he talk about that guy, how he's turned yeah. his career around in Miami. Everybody kind of left him for dead as you know, the backup quarterback for Mariota. And now he's having an incredible, I mean, he's one of the top guys now. So yeah, he's a good player, um, man. But yeah, that's easy for me. Um, I wish that uh, rivalry would come back because there wasn't nothing like it. Um, so yeah. I think it's in the works, my man. Ken and V, man. So proud of you. We said that Appreciate to start it, man. Uh, saw your little man come in. That's always so fun. That's good I told stuff. You, I, I ain't got no peace, bro. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> welcome to it, baby. Yeah. But it's a beautiful thing, man. So yeah. again, man, I'll certainly be seeing you as all this develops nope. uh, with Nick, with, with Clarksville, with all of that. And happy you're back in town, man. So appreciate welcome, you, appreciate you. Happy for you. And uh, appreciate you coming on, bro. Congrats, right, man. Happy. See y'all. Be good, Thanks, man. Guys.